Good morning again to our Sunday morning service. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank people for the prayers you've been uh, praying for my father. Uh, he's now in a, a care home, so thank you. And also, we can thank God today for the answered prayer in Gerald's life. Uh, on Tuesday night in the prayer meeting, we, we prayed with him. It was over Zoom, uh, and we prayed with him. And as you see in the newsletter, Gerald is acknowledging the healing touch of Jesus upon his life. So praise God, isn't it? So you've got a, a sheet that gives you the order of the service today, so you can use that and follow through. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as a fellowship of you people, we want to thank you for the blessing of answered prayer. Lord, consistently over months and months, we've seen the evidence in, in, in our lives as a, a group of your people of answered prayer. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we pray now over this service. Lord, perhaps the medium is a different to usual, but Lord, we pray your favour and your anointing upon everything that is said and done for the glory of your name. Amen. Uh, as usual, there are songs on a playlist on our YouTube channel. So if you'd like to go there now, stop this and go to our YouTube channel. And the first song is, is The Servant King. Um, the lyrics will be on the screen. And please just enjoy that song, The Servant King. Welcome back. Our reading today is from Romans chapter 16 and is verses 1 and 2. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a servant of the church, which is at St. Crea, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and that you help her in whatever matter she may have need of you. For she herself has also been a helper of many and of myself as well. Today, if we had been meeting, uh, it were, we would have celebrated communion together. So on that playlist, you have played the first song and used that for worship. There are now three more items on that playlist that you can use to celebrate communion where you are. The first is the reading from 1 Corinthians. Somebody will be reading that for you and then let it just flow into the next one. And that song is Remember Me. And during that song, opportunity is given for you to take the bread and to take the wine. And then the final song is All Hail the Lamb. So please use these videos on your playlist just for you to celebrate communion where you are. Please remember, we're not at a gravestone this morning. So often we can celebrate communion and a somberness comes. But celebrate this morning, we're not at a gravestone. Yes, Jesus died. But he lives and he's living for you and me now. So please stop the video and then just follow through with those next three items on the playlist and then come back and then we'll be looking at the message for today. God bless. Thank you. So we have read from Romans chapter 16 verses 1 to two. The series that we're doing is called Exceptions or Examples. And today we are, will be looking at Phoebe. One like writer has described Phoebe, the woman who wore the badge 
of kindness. I'm just going to give you a little background <clears throat> in Paul, where he is, and the writing of this letter to the Romans. And then we're going to look at the three things that Paul says about Phoebe. She's our sister. She's a servant at the church. And she's been a great help to many as well as to Paul. It's winter time. The suggestion is it's the winter between 56 and 57 AD. Paul is in Corinth. He's spending the winter there, uh, waiting for the weather to get better before he journeys from Corinth uh, and he's heading towards Jerusalem. He's been preaching the gospel for some 20 years, but he's never been to Rome. And this is what he's planning. And he says it in this letter to the Romans in chapter 1, chapter 15. I'm coming to see you in Rome. Um, uh, once he does leave Corinth, he's going to head toward Jerusalem because he has a, an offering for the church in Jerusalem. Um, Jerusalem was facing famine and the church was in desperate need. So Paul has collected an offering from the churches in Asia and he's going to be taking it to Jerusalem. And then once he's done that, he's coming to Rome. And then he's hoping to go from Rome to Spain. And what he's hoping is that the church in Rome will support him in whatever way is required so that he can go to Spain to preach the gospel. This letter, he's been preaching the gospel over 20 years. And this letter lays out what the message is that he is preaching. Yes, he introduces himself, but there's a lot of people in Rome, and you can see that from chapter 16, there's a lot of people in Rome that Paul knows, and they know Paul. They have worked with him, for example, the amazing couple Priscilla and Aquila are in Rome. So there are people that know him. So this letter he is being sent that explains the gospel that he has been preaching. And Phoebe, a Gentile woman named after a pagan goddess, but remember she's no longer a worshipper of pagan gods, she's a worshipper of the Lord God Almighty. And Phoebe is going to deliver the letter for Paul to the Christians in Rome. Just a, two things to mention here. Phoebe was from Sencrea. It's a seaport about seven to nine miles east of Corinth. Paul knows this town, he knows this seaport, because it was there that he had his head shaved in, observ in observance of a vow that he had taken. You find that in Acts 18. So this journey from Sencrea to Rome would not have been easy for Phoebe. It was a hard, hazard, hazardous journey. Um, it, it would have involved considerable travel on land and sea. But this lady is going to take the letter to Rome for Paul. Paul was placing great trust in her. Now, there's no postal service. And Paul generally put his letters into the hands of trusted friends and colleagues. And we can commend Phoebe, as Paul commends Phoebe, for her willingness to take this letter. He's, as I said, demonstrating great trust in her that she will deliver this letter to the Christians in Rome. But Phoebe wouldn't have just been a postwoman. It wasn't just a matter of turning up in Rome, finding a mailbox and then putting the letter through. 
No. Now, Phoebe does appear to be a businesswoman. Now, we don't know if she offered to take the letter for Paul or she was asked to take the letter for Paul. We don't know. We don't know if she was going to Rome for some business. But she is a businesswoman. And she would have paid for this trip herself. Now, there's no evidence that she would have read the letter out. But there is evidence that she would have helped people in Rome to understand more of what Paul was writing in the letter. These people that carried letters for Paul, they do seem to have had a role in regard to the letter, letters and people understanding them, and they playing their part, perhaps as personal mediators in some cases. So Phoebe is not just a postwoman. It's a hazardous journey, a difficult journey, it takes great courage and bravery. And she would have been she would have been used to just explain to people more about what Paul was writing. So she brings the letter to Rome. The letter is opened. Now we don't know what how they did that, whether they read, oh, this is from Paul, and then they looked at the greetings at the end, or they read the letter and then they came to the greetings. We don't know. But in the greetings part, Paul says, I commend to you. Paul is introducing Phoebe to the Christians in Rome. He is vouching for her. This woman is worthy of your confidence. Letters of commendation were well known in the ancient world. Whenever the early Christians traveled from one church to another, they carried letters of introduction. I remember many, many years ago, as a family, we came down to Tynmouth on holiday. And a friend of my father, gave him a letter of introduction for a particular church down here. And we were able to go to church and enjoy fellowship there for the fortnight's holiday that we were here. So Paul's commendation, he's introducing Phoebe to the Christians in Rome. I present to you, I set before you Phoebe. She's not a fraud. She's not a pretender. She's not risky. I commend her to you. Welcome her. Be hospitable to her and care for her. And he says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe. Paul is saying she's family. She's a devoted member of God's family. When this special lady arrived in Rome and presented Paul's letter, they must have realized quite quickly Paul's trust in her, even before they read the opening, this opening commendation. It was evident that this lady deserved their respect and their appreciation for bringing the letter. It's been a difficult journey. They wouldn't have known that she was coming. She would have just appeared. And Paul says, I've sent a sister to you. A sister who is demonstrating sacrifice. Every likelihood, as I said, she's paid for the trip herself. And this trip has required considerable resources of time and finance. Here's a lady who's not showing a little selflessness, who's showing courage, perseverance, commitment. She's demonstrating family traits. That's what, God fa that's what God's family looks like. It's a family of selflessness, of sacrifice, of courage, of commitment, of perseverance. She's demonstrating 
the traits of her brother and our brother, the Lord Jesus Christ. This Paul is saying this is the DNA of our family. Sacrifice, selflessness, courage, commitment, thinking and serving others before themselves. I commend to you our sister. She is this, she's demonstrating family likeness. She's part of the community of Jesus. She has the same heavenly father as you and I. She's part of the same household of God as you and I. She's a sister of all the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. She's our sister. And I think we should be grateful, as I've already suggested to Phoebe. This letter has been a blessing. And you know, Romans chapter 5 brought a real turning point in history with the truth of justification. So thank God for Phoebe. And we say thank God for Phoebe for taking this letter and showing sacrifice and selflessness and commitment in taking this letter on such a, a tough journey to Rome. Paul also says, describes her as a servant of the church in Sencria. She is a church base. She's not a floater. She is a home church. And she's a servant in the church. She's a deacon in the church. The word that Paul uses here, he uses in his letters to describe individuals who have a particular ministry and calling from God. That's how he uses this word. There was another word he could have used, which just spoke of, you know, general servanthood. But no, he uses a word here that describes individuals who carried a commission from God. He, for example, he used this word of others in his letters. He used the word of himself. Diakonos. He used the word of Timothy. He used the same word of Epaphras. He used the same word of Tychius. He used the same word of Apollos. And he uses the same word of Phoebe, a woman. Whatever Paul and the other five were doing as deacons, Phoebe was doing the same. She was fulfilling the same ministry and calling in the local church. The word is deacon, not deaconess, as the King James puts it. Someone says, you know, that's a sexist term. The word Paul uses is the same for male or female. Phoebe was a deacon. And following Paul's writing and the use of that word, Phoebe was fulfilling a ministry. She had a spiritual commission from God in the local church. She's not a floater, Christians in Rome. This lady is a deacon. And Paul says, now receive her in the Lord. This is not unlike the way Paul have written about others, welcoming, welcoming others like Timothy and Epaphroditus, coming to Corinth and Philipp Philippi. Receive, as you re receive them, receive Phoebe. She's a messenger. She's on a mission. She's going to bring blessing to you. Welcome her with open arms minds and hearts go beyond the normal that's what he's saying now go beyond the normal regarding hospitality phoebe comes to you from the lord and help her stand by her what paul is saying we don't know if she might have come to rome for some other reason well paul is saying whatever stand by her give her help 
support her as she has helped others now step up and help her and stand by her in whatever else she wants to do in Rome. As I said, I don't know how this letter was read, but I guess when they read this commendation of Phoebe, whether they read it right at the beginning before reading all the letter or what, their ears picked up and they would have been ready to hear from Phoebe. As I said, Paul's messengers were used to explain further things that Paul was writing about, helping people to understand further the truth that Paul was putting in his letter. Because you can't put everything in a letter. And I think their ears would have pricked up when they have heard this commendation of Phoebe. What a woman that Paul has sent us. As I mentioned in my first point, Phoebe was demonstrating the DNA of God's family. Her selflessness, her sacrifice. She's not an intruder. And here again, with this commendation, this word diakonos, she again, we see Paul saying she's displaying family. In Romans 15, Jesus is described in the same way. The same word is used, the word that was used to, of Paul himself, Timothy, Epaphras, Apollos, as I said. And the word that was used of Phoebe is used of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is saying she is living and serving like Jesus. Jesus didn't leave specific instructions about how he wanted his, his followers to be organized. But he, was a, he, but he was very clear about the heart that he wanted to see. He wanted his followers to have servant hearts. Of course, Jesus was the example. He came as one who served. He took the towel, he took the basin. And he was straight, there was to be no Lord in it over people. But there was to be a heart of servitude in all his followers and in those involved in ministry. And Phoebe had such a heart. Phoebe then. And the final thing Paul writes about her is that he says she's been a great help to many people, including me. This is the third description that Paul gives of Phoebe. A benefactor of men, <coughs> excuse me, of many people, including me. She is one who has stood by in case of need. She is one who has helped practically. Yes, she's a woman of means, but she has helped practically. And the way it's written is this. She's been proactive in her service, in this idea of helping people and Paul includes himself. She's been proactive in that. Now, Phoebe does seem to be a wealthy woman. And she has had the resources to help many people, including Paul. In Roman society, the patron-client system was dominant. Pa patrons did favours for their clients with the understanding that the client then would be obligated but to do something for the patron. So acquiring clients was one way for a patron, patron to show, to gain prestige and power. But yes, Phoebe is a benefactor, but she's not following the Roman system. Paul, by introducing Phoebe first, as our sister is saying clearly, she's not expecting anything in return from you. She's not going to use you to increase her prestige, but she comes as a sister expecting nothing in return. Phoebe would have been aware of what Paul taught. Our giving 
is to be in response and a thank you for the generous giving of God in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Phoebe has helped many, Paul says, including myself, as a sister in Christ, who is grateful for the grace of God in her life. She's following again the example of Jesus who loved the church and gave himself for it. Phoebe loves the family of God. She's your sister. She identifies herself as part of the family. And as Jesus gave himself, Phoebe is giving of her time and her resources, which would have been a very serious investment for her. And she's investing and she's giving of her time and resources for her spiritual family. Phoebe then. Romans 16 is a great chapter. We can just think of it as a list of names. But as we found, as we found with Phoebe, there's some tremendous people Paul mentions in chapter 16. People who were not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. Pat and I have travelled to Africa and Italy and to Romania on ministry. And I have been constantly amazed the people that God has in his kingdom. And I have often said to God, God, you have some amazing people in your kingdom. And Romans 16, some amazing people that we can learn from. So chapter 16 is a great chapter. Also, it's a chapter that shows Paul's pastoral heart. He's showing care and, and interest with two people and people who have already worked with him. So we see a pastor's heart. But what can we learn from Phoebe's example? Now, I have purposely kept away from expanding on the role of women in leadership in a local church. But the truth is there. The fact that Paul writes, Phoebe, a servant, a deacon of the church in St. Crea, does point that Phoebe served in some recognised capacity as a deacon in the local church. This should make us consider that the role of women in, in a local church can be more than just making tea. And remember this word deacon that Paul used to describe Phoebe, he used to describe others as well, identifying such people with the ministry that they had from God. So what can we learn from Phoebe? She was a servant. Paul didn't entrust the letter to her because she was a wealthy woman, but because she had proved herself to be a servant. A willingness to serve. Greatness in the kingdom of God is linked to service. Jesus said, whoever wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Service coming out of gratitude to God for the gift of his son and all that has meant. Phoebe was a servant. She was also a steward. I want to mention here a man called David Ferran. You wouldn't have heard about him. He owned a tug business in Belfast Harbour. When Belfast Harbour would have been a real busy fish, uh, so not a fishing port, would have been a very busy port. He was a Christian and he was a successful businessman. He used his resources to buy gospel vans for evangelistic teams in the UK. He financed two evangelists to come to Northern Ireland in the 1950s to take the gospel throughout Ulster. He bought a big house by a sea, in, in a seaside town in Northern Ireland so that families from the, the churches in the denomination he was in, they could, who couldn't have afforded a holiday, could have gone to the seaside and had a break 
in this home. A man who God had blessed and he was using his resources to bless others. I know he did other things as well, but he was a steward, a faithful steward of everything that God had given him. And here we, we see it in Phoebe, using her resources to advance the gospel, and she was a good steward. And finally, she was a saint. She was devoted to the service of her saviour. She is a set apart person, set apart by God and set apart for God. We have seen how her actions and behind those actions, we see Christ-like character qualities. She was different, not following the pattern of the world in the patron-client relationship, as I've mentioned. She was different. Just think of Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices and do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Phoebe was a living witness of those verses. It was Phoebe who brought the letter to Rome. What a testimony she must have been to the Roman Christians as they read the letter and they read the commendation of Phoebe. What a witness to the power of the gospel. So for us, Phoebe, not an exception, but our example. Our example to be a servant, to bear the family traits, to be a steward, to honour God with what God has given you, to advance the kingdom and be a saint, separated unto God for his glory and his alone. Thank you. On the playlist, on the YouTube playlist, there's two more videos for you to watch. The first one is Jesus, all for Jesus. All I ask to be like him. So just play that song and just think about Phoebe and her example to you and me. And then just let it run straight into the next song. And that is from Numbers 16. It's the priestly blessing that the Lord bless you and keep you and his, make his face shine upon you. So again, thank you for joining us for this service. And just pray God's blessing upon you, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. Thank you. God bless. Take care.